My sister-in-law's scams, lies, and addictions shattered our home. Now I'm picking up the pieces after betrayal tested my marriage. I'm Richard, 30M, and I've been married to my wife Sammy, 28F, for five years. We have a three-year-old daughter named Emma. Sammy and I met in college where we were both studying business. We hit it off immediately and started dating in our sophomore year. After graduation, we both got jobs at the same marketing firm, which is where we still work today. Sammy has a younger sister, Jessica, 25F, who has always been the troublemaker in the family. Growing up, Jessica was always getting into fights at school, sneaking out at night, and generally causing their parents a lot of stress. When Jessica was 16, she got caught shoplifting and had to do community service. This incident seemed to be a wake-up call for her, and she straightened out for a while. Jessica managed to graduate high school and even started college, which made her parents really proud. But halfway through her freshman year, she dropped out, saying college wasn't for her. Since then, she's been bouncing from job to job, never staying in one place for more than a few months. Sammy and Jessica's parents, Tom and Linda, have always been very supportive of both their daughters. They paid for both girls to go to college and have often helped Jessica out financially when she's been between jobs. Tom and Linda are kind people, but I sometimes think they enable Jessica's behavior by always bailing her out. A few weeks ago, Jessica lost her job at a restaurant where she'd been working for only months. She got into an argument with a customer who complained about their food being cold. Blem. Instead of handling it professionally, Jessica apparently told the customer to microwave it yourself and stormed off. The manager fired her on the spot. The day after she was fired, Jessica called Sammy crying and asking if she could move in with us just for a few weeks until she found a new job. Sammy, being the kind-hearted person she is, immediately said yes without even consulting me. When she told me about it later that evening, I was not happy. I reminded Sammy about all the times Jessica had taken advantage of her kindness in the past. So there was the time she borrowed $2,000 from us for a car down payment, which she never paid back. She promised to pay us back $100 every month, but after the first two payments, she stopped, always having some excuse about why she couldn't pay that month. Then there was the time she stayed with us for a month when she first moved to our city. She said she'd help with chores and cooking, but she never lifted a finger. She'd sleep until noon every day, eat our food, and leave dirty dishes all over the house. When she finally moved out, we had to deep clean the guest room because it smelled like stale cigarettes even though we'd asked her not to smoke in the house. So not to mention the countless times she's shown up unannounced at our doorstep, expecting to be fed and entertained. She'd often bring friends over without asking, raid our fridge, and leave without so much as a thank you. I told Sammy that I didn't want Jessica living with us, especially with our young daughter in the house. Jessica has a habit of staying out late, drinking excessively and bringing random guys home. I didn't want that kind of influence around Emma. Emma is at an age where she's very impressionable and I worry about the example Jessica might set. Sammy argued that Jessica was family and that we should help her out. She said it would only be for a few weeks and that Jessica had promised to be on her best behavior. Asas, she reminded me of how her parents had always been there for us, like when they helped us with the down payment on our house or when Linda stayed with us for two weeks after Emma was born to help out. I wasn't convinced. I knew from past experience that Jessica's few weeks could easily turn into months and her promises were often broken. I also pointed out that there's a big difference between her parents helping us out and us constantly bailing out Jessica. We've worked hard for what we have, and I don't think it's fair for Jessica to take advantage of that. We argued about it for hours. Sammy accused me of being heartless and said that I didn't understand what it meant to be family. Makey, she brought up how my own sister had stayed with us for a month when she was going through her divorce and how I hadn't hesitated to help her out. So I explained that the situation with my sister was different. She had a job, contributed to household expenses, and had a clear plan for getting back on her feet. Jessica, on the other hand, had a history of taking advantage of people's kindness without any real effort to improve her situation. In the end, I put my foot down and said that Jessica could not move in with us. I suggested that we could help her find a cheap apartment or even pay for a month's rent somewhere, but our house was off limits. I explained that I was willing to help Jessica, but not in a way that might disrupt our family life or potentially expose Emma to negative influences. Sammy was furious with me and hasn't spoken to me properly in days. She's been giving me the cold shoulder, only talking to me when it's absolutely necessary, usually about Emma or household chores. I can tell she's really upset, but I still believe I made the right decision for our family. Jessica found out about my decision and has been bad-mouthing me to the rest of the family. She's been telling everyone that I'm cruel, 
and that I've never liked her. This isn't true, I've always tried to be polite and welcoming to Jessica, even when her behavior was difficult to deal with. My in-laws have been calling and texting, telling me how disappointed they are in me for not helping out family in need. Tom even called me and tried to guilt trip me, saying that they had always treated me like a son and couldn't believe I would turn my back on family like this. Even my own parents think I'm being too harsh. My mom called and reminded me of all the times my family had helped me out when I was younger. She said that family should always come first and that I should reconsider my decision. The whole situation has created a lot of tension in our extended family. Sammy's cousins, who I usually get along with well, have been cold to me at recent family gatherings. I overheard one of them saying that I was being controlling and that Sammy should stand up to me. But I stand by my decision. I believe that sometimes tough love is necessary and that constantly bailing Jessica out isn't doing her any favors in the long run. She needs to learn to stand on her own two feet and face the consequences of her actions. I think that by always rescuing her, her family has prevented her from growing up and taking responsibility for her life. I've tried to explain my reasoning to Sammy, but she's too upset to listen. I suggested that we could offer to help Jessica in other ways, like helping her update her resume or practicing job interview skills with her. But Sammy says that's not enough and that Jessica needs a stable place to live while she gets back on her feet. The whole situation has put a strain on our marriage. Sammy and I have always been a team, making decisions together and supporting each other. This is the first time we've had such a major disagreement, and I'm not sure how to fix it. I love Sammy and hate seeing her upset, but I also feel strongly that I'm doing the right thing for our family. I'm starting to doubt myself, though. Am I the asshole for refusing to let my sister-in-law move in with us? Should I have given in to keep the peace in the family? Or am I right to stand my ground and protect my own family's well-being? I'm torn between my love for my wife and my desire to do what I think is best for our daughter and our home life. Update 1. It's been two weeks since my last post, and a lot has happened. I wanted to give you all an update on the situation with Jessica. So a few days after I refused to let Jessica move in, Sammy's parents offered to let her stay with them. They have a spare room in their house, and they thought it would be a good opportunity for Jessica to get back on her feet. Sammy was relieved thinking this would solve the problem. I was hopeful too, thinking that maybe with her parents' supervision, Jessica might finally start to turn her life around. However, things took an unexpected turn. Jessica moved in with her parents, but after just three days, she got into a huge fight with them. Apparently, they had set some ground rules about job searching and helping around the house, which Jessica didn't take well. She accused them of treating her like a child and said she couldn't live under their dictatorship. She stormed out of their house in the middle of the night, leaving behind most of her belongings. The next morning, we got a frantic call from Sammy's mom. Linda, Jessica had disappeared, and they couldn't reach her on her phone. They had already called all of Jessica's friends that they knew of, but no one had seen her. Linda was in tears, worried that something bad might have happened to Jessica. Sammy was worried sick and spent the whole day trying to contact Jessica or any of her friends who might know where she was. She even called Jessica's ex-boyfriends, thinking she might have gone to one of them for help, but no one had seen or heard from her. As the day went on, Sammy became more and more distraught. She started blaming herself, saying that if we had just let Jessica stay with us, none of this would have happened. I tried to comfort her, reminding her that Jessica was an adult who made her own choices, but Sammy was too upset to listen. Late that night, we finally got a call from Jessica. She was drunk and crying, saying she was at some guy's apartment and didn't know how to get home. She couldn't remember the guy's name or the exact address of where she was. Sammy immediately wanted to go pick her up, but I was hesitant. I didn't want Sammy driving across town in the middle of the night to an unknown location. After some discussion we compromised, I would go pick up Jessica, but Sammy would stay home with Emma. Um, mm. I got what information I could from Jessica about her location and drove there feeling a mix of anger and concern. It took me almost an hour to find the right apartment building. When I finally found the right place and knocked on the door, a guy I'd never seen before answered. He looked relieved to see me and explained that Jessica had shown up at the bar where he worked, got extremely drunk, and he had brought her back to his place because she couldn't remember where she lived. He said he had tried to get her to call someone earlier, but she had refused. I found Jessica passed out on the guy's couch. I thanked him for looking out for her and apologized for the trouble. As I was helping Jessica to my car, she woke up and started rambling about how everyone in her life was against her and how she was sick of people trying to control her. I mostly stayed quiet, not wanting to argue with her in her current state. When we got home, Sammy helped Jessica into the guest room to sleep it off. Sammy wanted to stay up and talk to Jessica, 
but I convinced her to wait until morning when Jessica would be sober. The next morning, Jessica was incredibly hungover and embarrassed. She could barely remember what had happened the night before. When Sammy and I sat down to talk with her, she broke down crying, admitting that had a problem and needed help. Sammy and I had a long talk with Jessica. We told her that we were willing to help her, but on our terms. But we laid out a plan. Jessica could stay with us for one month, but during that time she had to attend AA meetings, see a therapist, and actively look for a job. So we made it clear that this was her last chance, and if she didn't stick to the plan, she would have to leave. To our surprise, Jessica agreed to everything. She seemed genuinely remorseful and determined to change. She said she was tired of disappointing everyone and wanted to get her life together. Sammy was overjoyed, thinking this was the turning point Jessica needed. I, however, remained skeptical. So I've seen Jessica make promises before, only to break them when things got tough. I agreed to give her this chance, but I made it clear to Sammy that I wouldn't hesitate to ask Jessica to leave if she violated our agreement. We set up some ground rules for Jessica's stay. She had to be home by 10 p.m. every night wasn't allowed to bring anyone to the house without our permission, and had to contribute to household chores. We also made it that any drinking or drug use would result in immediate eviction. It's been a week since Jessica moved in, and so far, things have been okay. She's been attending AA meetings and has an appointment with a therapist next week. She's also applied for a few jobs online. She's been helping around the house, doing dishes and laundry without being asked. But I can't shake this feeling of unease, I catch Jessica giving me dirty looks when she thinks I'm not looking, and I've overheard her complaining to Sammy about how strict our rules are. Yesterday I noticed that some cash was missing from my wallet. It wasn't a lot, just $20, but it made me suspicious. I'm also worried about the effect this is having on Emma. She seems confused by Jessica's presence and has been acting out more than usual. She had a tantrum at daycare yesterday, which is very unlike her. Sammy, on the other hand, is thrilled. She's convinced that Jessica has turned over a new leaf and keeps talking about how proud she is of her sister. She's been spending a lot of time with Jessica, helping her look for jobs and talking about her future plans. I'm trying to be supportive, but I'm finding it hard. Every time I see Jessica, I'm reminded of all the times she's let us down in the past. I'm worried that she'll slip up and hurt Sammy again, or worse, that she'll be a bad influence on Emma. I'm also concerned about the strain this is putting on my relationship with Sammy. We've been arguing more than usual often about Jessica. Sammy thinks I'm not being supportive enough, while I feel like she's being too lenient. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this really is the wake-up call Jessica needed, but a part of me is preparing for the worst. I'm determined to protect my family, even if it means being the bad guy in everyone else's eyes. Am I being too paranoid? Should I give Jessica the benefit of the doubt? Or am I right to be cautious given her past behavior? I'm struggling to find the right balance between being supportive and protecting my family. Update 2 It's been a month since Jessica moved in with us, and I have some surprising news to share. For the first three weeks, Jessica seemed to be sticking to our agreement. She attended her AM meetings regularly, saw her therapist twice a week, and even landed a job at a local bookstore. She was home every night by 10 p.m., helped with household chores, and was generally pleasant to be around. Sammy was thrilled, constantly telling me how proud she was of Jessica's progress. I had to admit, I was impressed too although I remained cautiously optimistic. Jessica and Emma seemed to be bonding, which made Sammy happy. Jessica would read bedtime stories to Emma and even took her to the park a few times. A city, I was still a bit wary, but I couldn't deny that it was nice to see them getting along. However, things took an unexpected turn last week. I came home early from work one day, not feeling well. As I walked into the house, I heard voices coming from the living room. I recognized Jessica's voice, but the other voice was male and unfamiliar. I walked into the living room to find Jessica sitting on the couch with a man I'd never seen before. They both looked surprised to see me. Jessica quickly introduced the man as Mike, saying he was a friend from her ah uh, ab meetings. I noticed two beer bottles on the coffee table in front of them. I was furious. Not only had Jessica broken our no alcohol rule, but she had also brought a stranger into our home without permission, where our daughter could have easily walked in and seen them. I told Mike he needed to leave immediately, which he did, looking embarrassed. Once Mike was gone, I confronted Jessica. She tried to downplay the situation, saying it was just one beer and that Mike was a good guy. I reminded her of our agreement and told her that this was unacceptable. I said she needed to pack her things and leave. Jessica burst into tears and begged me not to tell Sammy. She swore it was a one-time slip-up 
and that she'd been doing so well otherwise. She said she couldn't bear to disappoint Sammy again. I was torn. On one hand, I knew how much it would hurt Sammy to see Jessica fail again. On the other hand, I had promised myself I wouldn't let Jessica take advantage of us anymore. After some thought, I made a decision. I told Jessica that I wouldn't tell Sammy about the beer incident on one condition. She had to move out by the end of the week. I explained that while I appreciated her progress, I couldn't trust her in our home anymore. Jessica reluctantly agreed. The next few days were tense. Jessica started packing her things discreetly, while I tried to act normal around Sammy. I felt guilty for keeping this from my wife, but I truly believed it was for the best. Sammy was so happy thinking Jessica had turned her life around, and I didn't want to be the one to shatter that illusion. On the day Jessica was supposed to leave, another shocking revelation came to light. Sammy came to me, visibly upset, holding Jessica's phone. Apparently Jessica had left it unlocked on the kitchen counter, and Sammy had seen a text message pop up that caught her attention. The message was from Mike, the guy I had caught Jessica with. It said something about getting their story straight before Jessica left our house. Confused and worried, Sammy had looked through more of the messages I know invasion of privacy, but given the circumstances I don't blame her. What she found was horrifying. Jessica had been planning this whole charade from the beginning. The night she got drunk and needed me to pick her up? It was all an act. She had coordinated with Mike to make it look like she had hit rock bottom so that we would feel obligated to take her in. The messages revealed that Jessica never actually attended any AA meetings or therapy sessions. She had been using that time to meet up with Mike and plan their next move. The job at the bookstore was real, but Jessica had been stealing money from the register to fund her and Mike's drug habit. Sammy was devastated. She confronted Jessica, who initially tried to deny everything but eventually broke down and admitted to it all. She said she needed a place to stay and access to drug habit, and she knew we wouldn't help her if we knew the truth. I was angry beyond words. Not just at Jessica for her betrayal, but at myself for not trusting my initial instincts. I told Jessica to get out of our house immediately, and this time, Sammy didn't argue. As Jessica left, Sammy turned to me and apologized for not believing me from the start. She admitted that she had always wanted to see the best in her sister, but now she realized that Jessica needed more help than we could provide. We've decided to cut off all contact with Jessica for now. Sammy is heartbroken but understands that it's necessary for our family's well-being. We've informed the rest of the family about what happened, and while they're shocked and saddened, they support our decision. This whole experience has been a harsh wake-up call for all of us. It's shown us the importance of trusting our instincts and setting firm boundaries, even with family. While I wish things had turned out differently, I'm relieved that the truth came out before Jessica could do any more damage to our family. We're now focusing on healing as a family. Sammy and I are looking into family therapy to help us process this experience and strengthen our relationship. We're also spending extra time with Emma, making sure she feels secure and loved. I'm still struggling with guilt over not telling Sammy about the beer incident right away, but I'm trying to forgive myself. I know I was trying to protect her, even if it wasn't the right way to go about it. As for Jessica, we hope she gets the help she needs, but we can't be the ones to provide it. We've learned the hard way that sometimes loving someone means letting them face the consequences of their actions. Update 3. It's been six months since the incident with Jessica, and I wanted to give you all a final update on our situation. After Jessica left our house, we didn't hear from her for several weeks. Sammy was devastated and went through a period of depression, blaming herself for not seeing through Jessica's lies. I did my best to support her, reminding her that Jessica's actions were not her fault. We started seeing a family therapist, which has been incredibly helpful in processing everything that happened. About a month after Jessica left, we received a call from the local police department. Jessica had been arrested for possession of drugs and theft. Apparently, her scam at the bookstore had been discovered, and when the police searched her apartment, they found a significant amount of illegal substances. Sammy was torn about whether to bail Jessica out or not. After much discussion, we decided not to, so we felt that Jessica needed to face the consequences of her actions if she was ever going to change. So it was a difficult decision, especially for Sammy, but we both agreed it was necessary. To our surprise, this seemed to be the wake-up call Jessica needed. While in jail, she enrolled in a court-mandated rehab program. She wrote us a letter taking full responsibility for her actions and apologizing for the pain she had caused. She didn't ask for anything just said she wanted us to know she was trying to get better. Sammy and I discussed it and decided to respond with a short, supportive message. We told Jessica we were glad she was getting help, but that we needed time and space to heal from what had happened. We made it clear that while we hoped for her recovery, we weren't ready to have her back in our lives. 
Over the next few months, we received updates from Jessica's counselor, with Jessica's permission. She was making progress in her rehab program and seemed committed to turning her life around. She had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and was finally getting proper treatment for it, which explained some of her erratic behavior in the past. Three months ago, Jessica was released from jail and entered a halfway house. She's been attending NA meetings regularly and has even started taking classes at a community college. She reached out to us again, asking if we would be willing to meet with her and her counselor. After much consideration, Sammy and I agreed to a meeting. It was difficult and emotional, but also productive. Jessica took full responsibility for her actions, without making excuses. She understood why we had cut contact and respected our boundaries. She didn't ask to be part of our lives again, just wanted to make amends. We're taking things very slowly. We've had a few more meetings with Jessica and her counselor, always in a controlled environment. She's been clean for six months now and seems to be making genuine progress. She's holding down a part-time job and continuing her studies. Sammy and I have been continuing our family therapy sessions. It's helped us communicate better and strengthen our relationship. We've learned a lot about setting healthy boundaries and supporting each other through difficult times. As for our relationship with Jessica, we're cautiously optimistic. We're not ready to fully trust her again, and she understands that. For now, we're maintaining limited contact. She's not allowed in our home or around Emma unsupervised, but we do occasionally meet for coffee or talk on the phone. Emma, who's now almost four, doesn't really remember much about what happened. We've explained in simple terms that Aunt Jessica was sick and needed to get better, and that's why she hasn't been around. We're being careful about reintroducing Jessica into Emma's life, always putting our daughter's well-being first. Our relationships with the rest of the family have mostly healed. Sammy's parents have apologized for enabling Jessica's behavior in the past and have been supportive of our decisions. They're also maintaining boundaries with Jessica, which has been good for everyone. This whole experience has taught us a lot about setting boundaries, the importance of trust in relationships, and the complex nature of addiction and mental health issues. While the road ahead is still long and uncertain, we're hopeful that Jessica will continue on her path to recovery. We're focusing on our own family and healing, taking it one day at a time. We've learned not to take our stability and happiness for granted, and we're working hard to create a positive, loving environment for Emma.